we're going to do lots of examples of sketching the graph of the derivative of a function. So I've got this function here f and I want to graph its derivative. Well it's important to note that when I'm graphing the derivative I am graphing slope values. I actually want to come up with a t-table here and I'm going to have x's and f prime of x's. Those are going to be the y value for our new graph. The easiest ones to find is where the derivative is equal to zero. Well, the derivative is equal to zero where I've got a flat tangent line. So I've got a derivative equal to zero at one, two. So at two, I have a derivative equal to zero. And I also have a derivative that's equal to zero. I've got that flat tangent line at negative one. So negative one is also zero. So I can grab my green pen and go over here to the graph of my derivative one, two, I've got a point that's zero there. So this is two comma zero. And then at negative one, I can also plot a point of zero. Okay, so we've got two points down. Next, I wanna figure out where the slopes of f of x are negative. Now I've marked those in yellow because the values that I've got here in yellow, I can notice that my graph is going down. So I'm gonna have negative slopes for all of those values. And in the middle, I'm going right here. This is gonna be where I've got positive slopes. So I'm gonna have negative slopes. So they're gonna be negative. Let's see, that's gonna be less than one. So less than negative one is gonna be negative, and then greater than two is gonna be negative. And then in between negative one and two, x, that's supposed to be an x, and two is gonna be positive. Now, wherever I've got something that's negative, this is gonna be below the x-axis. When I plot on my derivative graph, and wherever I've got a plus, that's gonna be above. Now, as I'm sketching this one, I do want a couple of numbers. So it is helpful to figure out where I've got a slope maybe of negative one. So I've got a slope of negative one at about right here at about negative 2.5. So I can go ahead and plot at negative 2.5, one, two, at 2.5. I have a slope of about negative one. I've got a slope of about positive one here at one. So I can plot one comma positive one. And I've got another slope at about negative one here at one, two, three, one, two, three. I have another slope of about negative one. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the dots here. It's not gonna be perfect, but we do notice, and this is supposed to be curved right here, that we've got this parabola shape. Okay, here's a really great hint. When you have something that looks cubic, like this one does, notice how it crosses at one, two, three places. I want the derivative to look quadratic, like a parabola. Okay, and let's go ahead and check those negative and positive slopes. I should have had a negative slope where I was less than negative one, and there's my negatives, here are my negatives, and my graph should be positive where I'm between negative one and positive two, and sure enough, I'm positive there. Okay, let's do another one. In this next one, I've got a really nice linear function, y equals x plus two. Well, thanks to y equals mx plus b, I can identify the slope really easily. m is equal to one, the coefficient in front of that x, no matter where I'm at. So that means if I were to come up with a t-table for some x values and some derivatives, it would be a super boring t-table. No matter what, the derivative or the slope is equal to one everywhere. Doesn't matter matter what x I put in here, I'm going to be equal to 1. So all of these points are going to have a y value of 1. So as I plot this, it's super boring. I end up with a value of 1 at every single point, and I get a flat line, a constant function. So this is a really great hint. So if you've got a graph that looks linear, you want the derivatives graph to be a horizontal or a constant function. Okay, here comes the next one. For this one, I again want to identify some slopes so that I can graph the derivative. I'm just going to sketch it, but I notice this is supposed to be an absolute value function. I notice that I've got 
one slope on the left hand side which happens to be negative and then I've got another slope on the other side which happens to be positive positive. and if I'm looking to see what that slope is it looks like it's about one I go down one over one to get to the next point so let's go ahead and come up with some of these slopes so I've got f and I've got f prime of x we also have a point where it's not differentiable and the point where it's not differentiable is here at 2. It's not differentiable there because I don't have a unique tangent line. So when x is equal to 2, the derivative does not exist, d and e, so I won't have a point there. But let's go ahead and put in everything else. So at the number say x equals 1, this is a 2. At x equals 1, I've got that negative slope, and I can estimate the negative slope to be about negative 1, and anywhere to the left of this, too. So I could say that that's true for 0, and that would be true for negative 3, and so on. Let's put a bar there. Then I've got a slope of positive 1, and that slope of positive 1 is over here on the right of 2. So for a slope of positive 1, I've got my numbers that would be anything beyond 2, right? So that would be like 3 three, four, um, 2.001, comma, and so on. So I really have two separate linear functions, and those are going to become constants. They're going to become horizontal lines. So I want a horizontal line on one side of two, and I want a different, a different horizontal line on the other side of 2. So on one side of 2, I've got slopes of negative 1. So it's going to look like this. So slopes of negative 1 with an open circle there at 2. On the other side, all of my slopes are positive 1. So I'm just plotting a whole bunch of positive 1s. But again, look how I am taking this absolute value, which is really two linear functions. And I am plotting two constant functions or two horizontal lines. Let's take a look at another. As I'm thinking about slopes for this one, I recognize that I've got a quadratic. So I really want to graph for my derivative one degree less than a quadratic. Quadratic's degree two, one degree less would be degree one. So that would be a linear function. So I know what I'm expecting. Let's go ahead and find some key points. I want to determine where this is equal to zero, where the slope is equal to zero. Let me put some tick marks here and some tick marks on my other graph. So I can see now that the slope is equal to zero. That's that turning point right there. The slope of f of x is equal to zero at two. So I can grab my green pen and over here at two, I can plot a point at zero. So point number one is down. Next, it's really nice to estimate where you've got a slope of one or negative one. So a slope of one looks like it happens right here at about negative one. Okay, we're just estimating, right? So that would give me a point on this graph of negative one comma a slope of one. So negative one comma one. Let me give myself some tick marks here in the y direction. One, two, three. Okay, so at negative one, I want a point here at one. Slope is equal to one. And then we can do the same thing for a negative. So it looks like that happens here at about three. So that would give me the point on my line of three comma, this goes down now at three, so that would be negative one. So over here at three, I would want to point at negative one. Now this isn't perfect, right? I'm just sketching, but I can go ahead and, let me make that point really big, but I can go ahead and connect my dots there and come up with my graph. 